Hey, my name is Renee Robin, and I'm the product manager for Optics here at Boris FX. Today, I'm going to walk you through a PSD breakdown of some artwork that I made using 3D assets for the first time from Kitbash 3D, Photoshop, and Boris FX Optics. Okay, so here we are now in Photoshop. This is the program that I know well. I am not going to make you suffer through watching me try and figure out Blender. Admittedly, it's traumatizing. Uh, you guys will light me up in the comments for uh, how little I know what I'm doing. But I know enough now to basically render exactly what I need and nothing else. So this is the Kitbash asset. This is the Mech Warrior. I thought it was very cool and very inspiring. And I was like, yes, let's make some cool stuff with this. So first things first, here I am. And I always want to make the background, like the ground itself first. I'm just going to go alt click here and show you my background image. This image I shot uh, of a cold lava tube. And if I open up the group here, you can see that I did do a little bit of gen fill here on the right hand side. And you can see here, this is my layer here. And it was really bright that day and I wanted it to be a little bit less. So I basically just did a hue saturation layer and I clipped it to it. So that's using alt to clip your adjustment layers to that. So I'm going to close that there. And the next thing I did is here, I make my black background, of course, so I can see everything that I'm looking at. And then I added in the stars. Now, when I was first making this, I was admittedly just playing around. So my PSD is admittedly a little bit all over the place, but that's what happens when you're experimenting and kind of noodling is it's just like, well, let's see where this takes me. So the first thing I did was I did make a night sky layer in optics, but I forgot to make it a smart object layer. So I just basically created another one so that I can show you what I did. So this is what it looks like here and duplicated my black layer and I converted it to a smart object this time. And we're gonna go into optics. Now, the reason why we're doing a PSD walkthrough instead of watching me edit this live is because you don't wanna sit here for four hours watching me go back and forth on a PSD and trying to figure out exactly what I wanna do next. So in an image like this with as many elements that we have, this is definitely the sanity inducing option. Apply previous filters and masks, we're going to say yes. Now I went into the render category here and a heads up, I'm working in the advanced workspace so here we go to workspace and advanced that moves the layer panel over here to the bottom right hand side and then I also added in the filters tab on the bottom so the advanced workspace by default does not have that uh, it's just to give you like a larger workspace to play with but I like having this stripped down here on the bottom it just helps me kind of visualize what's going on so this is just the default. I went to render night sky and I just picked the default. And here you can see we can adjust the longitude. We can adjust um, the latitude and the GMT offset of everything here. So everything rotates. If you have anything very specific in mind, you can actually put in the year, month, day, hour, minute and get exactly what the sky looks like at that time based on that longitude and latitude GMT offset. We can adjust the star size if we want to. So we can make it really big or we can make it really small. So in my case, I did wind up making it quite a bit smaller. I wanted it to be nice and subtle and I picked something around here anyways something like that yeah I think it was something in here and uh, yeah you can adjust the glare size you can add streaks if you want to uh, you can add background brightness and there's also a random seed slider as well if you wanted to do that uh, but you know you don't have to literally the basics here are more than enough and then there's lots of other adjustments here there's Orion the North Pole Gemini etc so for all of you space nerds who love making space artwork uh, this is a really great place to start so we're just going to hit apply now that our step up area here has been taken care of <laughs> uh, so what I did is obviously my night sky images on top of the moon so I created another black layer and I went to S Luna in optics. So I basically created another black layer and we rendered the moon on top of it again from optics. So again, I'm just in the render category. I went to S Luna and I just grabbed the full moon and I dragged it up here to the right hand corner of my image. And I just started playing with the atmospheric frequency. So you can see how that changes the settings of how much space dust is gonna be around the moon in this case. So I knew that I was going to be throwing a lot of stuff into the atmosphere on this image because that's who I am as an artist. I just like crap flying around in the air. I think visually it's pleasing to me. I am terrible at minimalist photos and minimalist artwork in general. So yeah, basically straight up the full moon is more than enough just as it is. And then I just played with the atmospheric frequency. Then I had the brilliant idea of adding a color balance to it with the red. I regretted that decision later. So I will show you uh, what I wound up changing with it. But at first I was like, yeah, red moon sounds great. Seems sci-fi. Wasn't a good choice. Then I created a curves layer and this is clipped to my ground layer here. So this is again just using the uh, the alt button here and 
making sure that this curves layer is only affecting my ground layer. And if you're not sure where these curves or, or adjustment layers are coming from, that's just right here in this little half circle. All of these guys here, they do magical stuff. So then I also created a hue saturation layer. Again, I just wanted it to affect my ground group, not the rest of the image itself. So I just wanted this a little bit more desaturated. Then I placed my mech number one. So this is my render straight out of Blender. I love that saying, even though I no idea what I'm doing in Blender. This is my subject here, and then I wanted to add in the shadows. So I added in the first set of shadows here, and then I created a levels clipping mask to that, and then hand painted in a little bit more shadow. Then I added a whole bunch of moon dust. And so if you want to create really great moon dust really easily, this is all just like, like I basically went outside with a black card, and I took baking flour and I basically just like sprinkled it in front of this black card and photographed it as it was falling and like smashed my hands together like this and it creates beautiful moon dust so I uh, highly recommend that and then I just put them all on a screen blending mode and then I just masked it out in front or sorry so that it didn't go in front of my closest mech then I went into optics and I created some lens flare so I duplicated my closest mech and then I converted it to a smart object and I went into optics. And basically what I did was I just played with the lens flare filter and I found a lens flare that I liked. In this case here, I wound up using this very handy uh, car rear light that worked really nicely for me. I'm gonna undo that because I changed a bunch of settings. And then I just duplicated it four times. So after I did the four duplications, what I did to make it look a little bit different between each one, if we zoom in here, what I did was I played with the rays uh, rotation tool so it's you can see here I mean I basically just pushed a bunch of sliders around until I got something that I liked and then I went into each lens flare duplicated it reduced the size for these smaller lights here at the top and then used the ray rotation tool now I'm sure all of the really hardcore VFX nerds will tell me optically of what I'm doing is totally wrong but our brains are trained to see patterns repeating patterns and there's nothing more distracting and nothing more that sells the fake for me anyways than seeing the exact same filter applied the exact same way uh, so I just basically took a shortcut and just used the raised rotation tool I could have made more changes if I wanted to but also it is quite small on the scene so I was like yeah it's good enough <laughs> and then I just hit apply next thing I did was I created a glow now I know in blender I could have done this and it would have been like actually accurate to the environment but I didn't know how to do it <laughs> I knew how to do the big edge rim lighting I didn't know how to do the smaller point lighting to create these types of reflections so I just created an overlay layer and I reduced the opacity by 68 percent and just a soft round brush and painted on the red light where I thought that it would be reflecting then the other thing that I noticed was that this shadow here, this contact shadow, uh, would have been much darker, and this was really distracting for me, so I just took another overlay layer and I sampled the color and just a soft brush and just painted in those contact shadows so it was a little bit less distracting then this is looking a little bit lonely I was like one dude isn't really enough for me so let's stick another one here I just added in a middle guy here on the image itself and then I made a further one so I had to go back into blender and I took the mech and I rotated it and I hit render again and that's what I got and then for my furthest one, because he's super small and super far away, I was like, I'm not going to spend the time in Blender rendering a third one. So I just took my front guy and flipped him and I was like, he's small enough, no one's gonna notice. Although I'm sure somebody will notice, but I put a bunch of stuff in the way, so hopefully it's less noticeable. Then I took more photos of like falling dust and flour and I uh, basically just put them onto screen blending modes and masked them very haphazardly. Uh, that's kind of what my masks look like. It's not, it's, not, it's nothing great. <laughs> But it's definitely good enough. Uh, so I basically just wanted, again, to add more density to the image, that there was just going to be more space stuff flying around everywhere. And this is where I started to realize that I made a bad decision on my color choice to have red in the background, because what was happening, as you can see here, I've got all this like pixelation here with the green and the magenta and it looks terrible. And I was like, oh, we can't have that. I need to fix this. So I created a soft light blending mode and I reduced it by 38 and 35 percent with a nice cyan color. And then I masked out my closest mech and my second closest mech. I did softly paint in some of the reflection of the cyan here on the front, though, because I kind of wanted there to be some of that light color reflecting on the angle of that part of the mech. So this is where the actual magic starts to happen is when we go into optics. So I basically merged everything up. I don't know if you've ever done this before. It's like slamming the whole left side of your keyboard. It's basically Alt-Control-Shift-E or Alt-Command-Shift-E. 
and it merges everything up into a singular layer. And so from here, what I did was I went into optics and now you can see this image is slowly starting to come together. There's still a few more things that need to be tweaked on it, but we're getting there. I'm gonna show you here in optics what I did next. First things, I basically created a detail layer so that I just went into image and I went into detail and I picked sharpen number two. I wanted this to look kind of crunchy. I wanted this to look a little bit punchy. And so that was step number one. Then I went into more lens flares. Flare I used. Do, 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 do. I used the red laser. I was like, that looks cool. Push some sliders around so it looked kind of like this like sparkly spray thing look that I was going for, which I thought was very cool. And then I duplicated that to give me one more. And then I added some edge rays. So the edge rays, I thought I was just like, well, you know, like technically the moon is kind of the light source is coming from like directly behind them, but there, there is a little bit of light coming from the right hand side. Maybe there's like a, you know, a building or a searchlight or something. I don't know, whatever, fill in this, whatever story you want. So I created the S edge rays adjustment here. And basically what that's doing, if I zoom in here nice and close, you can see before and after is again, just adding more atmospheric junk into my image that I thought looked nice. And then I added more lens flares, more lens flares, more lens flares. I duplicated it twice. And in this case, with this lens flare, I wound up using do, 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 Outland. Outland looked very cool. I thought it was very fun. Had that nice like horizontal dotted lines that I thought would be very fun for me to play with. And then I went into color correct. Now color correct is in the filters color and color correct tab. And I basically just picked one of these guys that was kind of like the bluish hue. I think it was Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That looked pretty awesome. And then I basically just pushed a bunch of sliders around. Now, a heads up, obviously, uh, all of the setups here that I'm using in this image, they're going to be available to download along with the stock that I photographed for this so that you can build this and follow along with your own assets or if you're one of the people who have picked up the Kitbash bundle. So from here, yeah, this is the color correction sliders that I went with. I thought it looked very fun. It's starting to look a little bit more Terminator-y. Terminator I basically hit apply from here and went back into Photoshop. Right now, it's definitely not quite exactly what I was looking for. Basically, at this point, I get up and I walk away from my computer for a bit and just like, give my brain a defrag and wash my eyes out and look at something else for a few minutes. And I came back and I was like, it's not really contrasty enough because I can't always tell exactly what's missing the first pass always. So I basically just created a levels layer and I, if I um, alt-click the mask here, I basically just, because I have a good mask from my mech and my ground that I cut out, I basically just put those two masks together and just did a gradient. Then I added a color lookup table because I was like, I need it to be more contrasty because like this is space after all and like, you know, Terminator and stuff like that. So this is starting to get a little bit closer. But one thing that I noticed I was missing was like that graininess of like the 1980s that I was really kind of going for. I went into optics one more time. And the first thing I did was I went into uh, S Film Effect. And so that's down here at the Film Lab. And then I went to S Film Effect. And I basically went with the default and pushed a bunch of sliders around, you know, like this is this is anything whenever you're playing with a with a retouching tool or you're learning something for the first time or you're not really sure what it is you're looking for, which was definitely me in this case because I was just like, playing around. I basically just pick something and then I just like push the sliders and just see what happens. And if I like it, what I do is I save those preset settings. So we go here, it says create custom preset. You can rename this and you can save it. And so what will happen is it'll show up here on the left hand side in alphabetical order. And it will also show up in your custom tab here. There's looks, which are multi-layer stacks of things, right? But then there's custom, which are just individual adjustment presets that you make on each filter. Here we are in film effect and I basically just picked that and I did an easy mask so you can see here my super precise easy mask masking. I can hit M on the keyboard there and you can see what this mask looks like. And I was just super stoked with the result. I liked how it looked. And then I added ultra grain. So that was the big thing that I felt was really missing. Uh, ultra grain is again in the film lab. So we go here to S ultra grain and I just picked one that I thought looked kind of fun and was matching again, the vibe of the eighties that I was kind of like inspired by with this image. And then the absolute final step that I did was I created a smart sharpen layer. So I merged everything up again, just slamming the whole left side of the keyboard, alt control shift E or alt command shift E. I basically ran a smart sharpen. So that is filter, 
sharpen, smart sharpen. I masked it onto my foreground elements. So again, because like the benefit of having like a nice mask is that it was just really easy to copy that up. I wanted it to be, I really wanted to have that difference in the sharpness between like my foreground here, which is this guy. I wanted this to be nice and crunchy, but I wanted my background elements, especially like along these horizon lines here to be a little bit softer and not quite as sharp as my foreground pieces. That is how that all came together. If you're interested in following along with this tutorial, there are also fully downloadable assets that were used to create this image, at least the stuff that I owned and that I photographed to download and to create your own artwork with as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, please let me know in the comments. Just a heads up right now, we have a really great deal going on between Boris Effects and Kitbash 3D where you can get basically 80% off of some Boris Effects software, including Mocha, Silhouette, and Optics, and some fantastic Kitbash 3D elements, including the Mech Warrior from this tutorial. Definitely hit the link below for more information.